Hello, my name is Zhifeng Kong. I'm very happy to introduce our paper, Data Reduction from Conditional Genitive Models. This is a joint work with uh, my PhD advisor, Professor Chad Huri at UC San Diego. In recent years, we have seen so much huge success in foundation generative models. For example, stable diffusion um, can turn text into high quality images. So to quote the famous saying by Richard Feynman, what I cannot create, I do not understand. Now the goals of this foundation generative models become what I understand, I can create. So first, I would like to give a brief introduction to the background of genetic models. And let's start with the unconditional models. In unconditional genetic models, there is a generator G, which takes a latent code Z as input. The Z is usually drawn from a standard Gaussian distribution. And the generated sample X equals to GZ, a forward pass. So the model is trained to generate high quality samples, such as this um, face images, um, and the latent code Z is used to control the randomness. So if you give the model a different latent code Z, it'll give you a different face image. And let's go beyond that. Uh, we have conditional jet models, which take an additional condition as input. We call it condition C. The condition C provides the context to the jet model. So the model can always generate things corresponding to this context. For example, in a text image model, the context is a text prompt, a teddy bear on a skateboard in Times Squares. So if you provide different latent code Z, the model will generate different images, but all of them will describe this text prompt you provide. Here is another example in text-to-speech models where provide more than one context. First is the text you want the model to speak. So I went to the park for a walk. And then you provide a model the emotion that you, the model, you want the model to speak, such as angry and sad. So now let me play the first sample, angry one. I went to the park for a walk. And the second sad sample. I went to the park for a walk. So as you can see, uh, we can build really fancy models by designing more complicated conditions. When these models get uh, larger and larger, uh, there are trustworthy concerns begin to emerge. That includes uh, many of those, uh, such as explainability, transparency, privacy, fairness, copyright issues. And there is a particular one for generative models, which is that they might produce undesirable outputs. And this is what this work is trying to address. So this chart shows the probability uh, that stable diffusion to generating inappropriate content. If you select prompts from a special data set containing uh, a bunch of inappropriate prompts, as you can see, the probability of generating all these different contents is a pretty large. And given that the model is not accessible to almost everyone, it can have very huge Im social impact. And this not only happens to image models um, for audio models, there are AI models that can turn text into celebrity voice, which some people call it voice cloning. And, and people can just use it to fake a celebrity to speak whatever they want, and this can have very unpredictable social impact. So in this work, in this work we ask how do we redact this on this other output? In other words, how do we prevent this output? from being generated. And I like to quote a famous saying by Rumi, who said, the art of knowing is knowing what to ignore. Let's first look at some plausible solutions uh, in the wild. The first is to redesign the pipeline and retrain the model. That includes data cleaning, changing model architecture, and changing loss functions. While this can be effective in some situations, it's usually expensive and slow, especially the models are large. The other solution is to use a postdoc filtering. You can apply the filter to either the sample or the prompt. If the filter says it's okay, no problem, then you output. If the filter says it's not good, then you just don't output. However, there are several challenges to this, this, this uh, solution. 
The first is efficiency. You might need a lot of filters, one filter for each rule, and that can make them up, the, the inference algorithm less efficient. There's a robustness concern where you can run a vector attacks to the filter. And most importantly, is the controllability of a third party. Imagine that you want to open source your model or you want to hand your model to a third party. They may just decide to not to use the filter. They can just take the code and remove the filter and generate whatever they want and you lose control. So we don't want that to happen. In this work, we propose a solution called post hoc redaction. In this framework, we post edit a pre-trained model by changing the model weights. And from a higher level, we merge the reduction rules into the network and there are no filters anymore. And it's also faster than retraining from scratch because we directly deal with the pre-trained model. It has several advantages. It's efficient, it's effective. We will show this in uh, our experiments and it's controllable because there are no more uh, filters. So let's dive into the formal framework of our uh, proposed approach. Let C be the space of all conditions. And for each condition C, there is a data distribution condition on that specific condition. And C omega is the set of conditions we want to redact, which is the set that lead to undesirable outputs with high probability, such as gun battle, bloody scene, and all different th this kinds of uh, text descriptions. Our goal of data redaction is to achieve such that undesirable conditions lead to benign outputs. So what does this mean? Let G be the pre-trained model and G edited is the model we want to uh, obtain. If the condition is good, such as a day in a park, then we just don't want to modify the output. We want to edit the model G edited to output exactly the same thing. However, if the a condition is to be redacted, such as a bloody scene, we are going to find a reference condition and mark this green C hat. That's usually in a benign set, such as a peaceful scene. So if the model takes the bloody scene as an input, it will eventually generate a peaceful scene and that solves the issue. How do we do that in practice? It turns out that we don't have to edit the entire gener generator. In most conditional generative models, there is a separate conditional network of H in this blue module. It transforms condition into some kind of representation and uh, fills that representation into the generator. So we just need to edit this conditional network, that's enough. So now our goal becomes H edited C equals HC if C is good and equals HC hat if C is to be redacted. So the last function directly reflects this goal. We minimize the sum of these two terms. The first term corresponds to the first non-redaction condition. The second term corresponds to this uh, redaction condition. And we add up these two uh, the differences with um, uh, lambda term as a trade-off hyperparameter. In practice, we might need some engineering and design for different sorts of architecture because architectures, network architectures can be very complicated, but the high level remains the same and based on this loss function. So in the following, I will show you some uh, experiments we do uh, for different types of models and tasks. The first is a text image model. We look at a text image model called DMGAN and turns uh, descriptions of birds into images of birds. It's very complicated. It has three uh, generators, but nowadays you don't have to really understand that. So this part is the pre-trained generator. And for each generator, there is a conditional network, H1, H2, and H3, uh, that uh, transforms the text embeddings into some kind of representation. So we are editing just these three blue uh, blocks here. Our goal is to redact prunes that contain certain words or phrases. 
we have some algorithm techniques to make it work better. And after applying these techniques, our computation time is roughly 30 minutes on just one GPU to edit the model. And as a comparison, the model takes a few days to run, to train. Here are some qualitative examples before and after reduction. In the first row, uh, we, the pre-trained model generates a bluebird. And now we are going to redact blue. So the, after reduction, the model generates uh, the same bird, uh, but in a, another color. And in the second row, we redact the concept of long beak. So the model, pre model generates a long beak bird, and after reduction, it generates a short beak bird. And the, the rest of the images are roughly the same. The background, the shape of the bird uh, are all about the same. So we just redact these particular concepts. To quantitatively measure the reduction quality, we start with the intuition that sample from the editing model should be more correlated to the reference condition C hat by definition. So we look at different R scores where we measure the percentage of samples such so that this, this correlation between X and C hat is larger than the correlation between X and 100 random captures or the correlation between X and the original caption uh, C. And we want these two fractions to be as high as possible. We compare it to a, a baseline method called rewriting. And it's very clear that our method uh, achieves much higher R scores than the baseline and the pre trained model as well, which indicates that our model uh, can correctly redact uh, different concepts. Another task we look at is uh, text to speech models. This is a diffusion model, which turn spectrogram into uh, waveforms. So this model has uh, a lot of residual layers. It's, uh, and each residual layer has a condition network. So there are roughly uh, 30 conditioning networks in total. We added, we added these networks in parallel and with some engineering tricks and um, our goal is to redact a specific person's voice. There are a bunch of algorithm techniques to make this work better. And our computation time is roughly four hours on just one GPU. And in comparison, the diffusion model takes a week to train on eight GPUs. So it's a lot of difference in terms of efficiency. We have a demo website containing all different, all these uh, sample comparisons. Um, and let me play one sample here. First, let's look at a non-redacted voice. And this is a pre-trained model. Produced the block books, which were the immediate predecessors of the true printed book. And since it's a non-redacted voice, we want the, the redacted, the editing model to, to generate the same thing. Produced the block books, which were the immediate predecessors of the true printed book. And that is indeed the case. And now let's look at a redacted voice. The pre-trained model has not seen this voice, but it can generalize so well to this voice. Peter continued to cry, and soon his sobs woke Jane. So now we redact this voice. The mod we want a model to generate something different. Here is the output. Peter continued to cry. And soon his sobs woke Jane. So we can hear that the, the sound is very different, and which indicates our model is able to redact this voice. To quantitatively measure the effect of um, our data reduction, we measure the speech quality after redacting different speakers. The speech quality measured in PSQ is roughly the same as the pre-trained model, indicating that uh, speech quality is uh, retained. And we train a voice classifier and measure the recall rate on the redacted voice. We want the recall rate to be as small as possible because a small recall rate in case the reduction has happened. And indeed, we find the recall rate has been um, reduced to very small, which in the case our model is able to redact these voices. 
So this wraps up the experimental section of our work. And here are some key takeaways. First, our data rejection framework adds the pre-trained condition network and maps the undesirable conditions to benign outputs. Our framework is versatile for different types of generative models. It does not really matter if it's GAN or diffusion, or VAE, autoregressive flow models, as long as you have a separate condition network, which most models do, then it should be good. And our framework can be used in different tasks and different modalities with minimum adaptions. And finally, our framework is effective and computationally efficient as shown in our experiments. This wraps up our research. I hope you like our research. I hope you find it useful. Thank you for watching.